thanks so much for coming tonight. Um, this story is really, really close to my heart, and so I'm excited that you all are here, and I'm excited to share this story with you. So again, thank you for being here. Go ahead. This is Nuru, and I want to tell you his story. I met Nuru three years ago when my husband and our daughters were living in Arusha, Tanzania. We had moved there from Bozeman to experience a culture very different from our own. Nuru was six years old. Nuru lived in this big, bright, happy house on the side of a volcano called Meru. He didn't live in this house with his parents or his brothers and sisters. He lived in this house with 100 other children. He had so many friends. This house is on the western slope of Mount Meru in the village of Ngenam Toni, which is just west of the city of Arusha, in the country of Tanzania. Tanzania is in East Africa. The Indian Ocean laps at her spectacular white sand beaches. Nuru's house has a special name, the Plaster House. It's been around for 10 years. Parents bring their children here looking to find a cure for their child's disability. Some kids have one club foot, some have two, some have cleft lip or palate, some have burn scars that constrict their movements, some have tumors. Other children at the plaster house have plasters that cover their entire legs. This boy has skeletal fluorosis. The condition is caused by toxic levels of fluoride which occur naturally in the streams that flow from Mount Meru. Rural Tanzanians often believe that children born with legs, feet, and mouths that do not look normal are cursed by evil spirits and will bring shame to their families. Such a child may be ostracized or shunned. Some are killed at birth, but some mothers have heard of a different path. This is Sarah, an occupational therapist from Australia. While volunteering in Arusha, she saw children go home from surgery, but not return for post-op care. Or if they did, they had removed their casts, or their wounds were open and infected. Sarah created the plaster house so every child could rehabilitate fully. Nuru was such a child. He was born in a mud hut in a village directly under the flight path of commercial airliners landing and departing from Kilimanjaro Airport. Both his feet were turned in, and he struggled to walk. His knees and hips bowed. And every day, above Nuru's head, jets arrived, bringing tourists determined to summit Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, and safari in her wildlands. But there is more to this place. On these adventures, they might miss the chance to meet Nuru, or to participate in the raw human spirit experience of Tanzania. If Nuru had been born in Bozeman, and not in his tiny village, his feet would have been straightened at birth. His club feet would have been identified in utero on an ultrasound, and a specialist would have casted his legs. Did you know that Christy Yamaguchi and Mia Hamm were both born with club feet? But Nuru's father had heard about, a diff had heard about this house and the foreigner who could make his son's feet straight. He loved his son. They traveled two hours by bus. Many parents travel for days, and when they arrive, they are expected to contribute to their child's care. Some bring sugar, some bring eggs. Nuru's father brought shillings. The staff welcomed Nuru with open arms. They, they are called the mamas. They fed him fresh fruits and vegetables, local meat and ugali, the cornmeal staple of the Swahili diet. Nuru put on needed weight, and he gained strength. And every day, Nuru and the other children gathered in the, in the cathedral-like Montessori classroom to sing songs, practice math facts, and make crafts with their teacher. At the plaster house, learning is important. This is their home away from home. A child stays here on average for three months. Children who have casted legs for skeletal fluorosis are not able to leave their beds. Volunteers like me and my family and the mamas bring them puzzles, Legos, and coloring books to keep their minds active. No child is left out. And it was so 
local Tanzanian, insurgen, local Tanzanian insurgents cut Nuru's little bones and his muscles. They reconfigured his small legs and feet. And after three months of care, he ran, played, and kicked balls with the other children. Nuru was finally ready to go home. Sarah asked my daughter Anna, me, and Letion, the outreach coordinator, to take Nuru home to his family. We hopped in the Jeep and drove east towards his village. We were silent the entire way. I was nervous to be part of the reunion of mother and child in this place where I knew my white skin did not fit in. His house, Letion pointed. Finally, a woman emerged from the windowless hut. Anna placed Nuru on the ground, and we walked together toward her. She didn't recognize her son, dressed in a t-shirt and jeans, wearing lime green Crocs on normal feet. <laughs> Who could these people be? Mama's eyes began to fill with tears. I unknotted Nuru's fingers from mine. His family and friends came out from the nearby huts, seeing Nuru and wondering where he had been. How was this possible? Asher, Asher, the elders chanted. Thank you. Letion, Anna, and I returned to the big, bright, happy house on the side of the volcano where everyone recalled the little boy who had once walked on the top of his feet. Now that little boy was running with his childhood friends, herding his family's goats, and walking to his village school. We understood that he, like all the children from the plaster house, would integrate back into his family in a whole new way. Nuru's life was now his own. Don't we all want a life of our own? This could have been me. This could have been you. Thank you. <laughs>